So good evening and welcome to this evening's meeting of the Planning and Highways Committee on Tuesday the 25th of April. And uh, this meeting is being recorded for publication on the Thatcham Town Council YouTube channel. So <clears throat> moving on to the agenda, um, item one, apologies for absence. Uh, one received. Thank you. Uh, declarations of interest. Councillor Lillycrop. Uh, thanks, Jay. Yes, uh, item eight three, the English Parliament on Chapel yeah. Street. I imagine this is Mr. Tom McCann, who's a Lib Dem candidate, and yeah. well known to me yes. and others. Yes, you, yeah, I, I have to make the same declaration, and not only is he well known to me, but I installed the sign that currently adorns his. All of them. Only the big one. Only, only the big one. one. Only the, only the, big one. one. So the big one. The big one is special engineering task that they were given to me. I include myself in the declaration of interest. Yeah. So, <clears throat> with that, uh, agenda item three, the minutes of our previous meeting on the 4th of April. Does to anyone you. have any comments before we move to approval? I see nobody seeking comments, so uh, we have a proposal to uh, approve them, to have a second there. Thank you, Councillor Crumley. Uh, those, all those in favour of so approving, thank you. That is unanimous. Which moves on to agenda item four, matters arising from the previous minutes. Um, nothing from the chairman. Um, okay, there are just two from me. I'm not sure if it's actually on these minutes, but it's a standing item. The, um, update on Lawrence's Lane inquiry. Uh, the the inspector has informed us that uh, he has received the final documentation uh, from the council and the appellants, which is a section 106 agreement on um, the financial, it's to do with conditions about the way that the development will be undertaken and that he will give his decision in due course. No, no, I think it was the beginning of the month of due course. Um, and the second thing I noted from the minutes, I think, uh, yeah, the, the, I think on this agenda to do, so it's on this agenda, submission of the um, West Berkshire Local Plan Review. I've got some comments on that. Okay, so that is um, agenda item four uh, concluded. So moving on to agenda item five, uh, which was an appeal before uh, the lodge at Crookham House. You have, um, <coughs> so just to note that this is an appeal on, it's a householder appeal on the basis of written, uh, written representations, which means that we have no further opportunity to make submissions. Therefore, Noted, therefore I suggest we note it as because we can't influence it. We're proposing to note that, are you, Councillor Williams? Yes. Council the list of voting first and raising no, it, noting it. Thank you. Vote. No, I've raised a question. Yeah, I raised a question, yes. Um, it, it said in the body that it deals with the senior under householder who yeah. has service. Yeah. And that's new to me. Do you know about that? It means it's a small, uh, it, the, the, it's a class of appeal, which is for householder de development, no, no, the champ modifications to a house. Uh, which is uh, considered to be small scale and therefore, well, firstly, it's underwritten representations and secondly, there is no no further opportunity to comment. Those are the two elements. Is this something I've not heard of before? Is it fairly new? I don't know because I haven't heard of it before, but... Okay. Um, it's there. So uh, we've noted that. Um, noted of submission of the West Berkshire Local Plan Review to the Secretary of State. Um, so we've received, been informed that it's been submitted. Uh, I would just, and in fact, if it's not on that e e email, um, so it says that the submission documents can be viewed online at westbarch.gov.uk. There is somewhere a second email uh, address, which might have been in the covering email. There it is. Uh, no, it's not. It's but it's. Uh, Okay, there is. We have received. I, I have received somehow a second, a second email, a second uh, website. The significance of that is, firstly, that there are some documents that are that on that website that have been submitted by West Berkshire Council, which were not available for the consultation. Um, 
that is the two appendices to the um, ICNI report, the um, uh, statement of the, the uh, statement of comment, the which one was it? Uh, the, yeah, the, 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 the document on, on the um, statements of common ground. And I think that there were two other documents, uh, though the council's uh, covering letter says that all of the documents that were submitted were consulted upon. Um, so uh, when I get the time, I will be writing to uh, that person. There's a name on that document yeah. who, who, if it's not clear from that letter, is acting on behalf of the inspector. So that's an independent person. And if he thinks it's appropriate, then that information will be forwarded to the inspector. Yes. 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 Not separate from any local plan covering the period from 22 to 39. No, it's it's always been called a local plan review. So that it is what we've been dealing with at great lengths on many meetings. It's the same thing, but that's the formal title. So this is the local plan prepared for the board by this time. Yes, and the other thing that I just remembered that is missing from, but they did a summary of comments, and one thing that is missing uh, from the section on the duty to cooperate is it doesn't mention uh, the assertion made by uh, the town council and I believe several other respondents that it doesn't comply with the duty to cooperate uh, with uh, the health board. So. Um, uh, I thought that was surprising that because that is a very serious legal matter. It's one of the top things that the inspector would, would need to uh, consider. And it's not mentioned at all that there were any representations on that point. What happens next, though? Is that goes to the Secretary of State either head of state or No, it goes to, it goes to the Secretary of State. It goes, legally speaking, it goes to the Secretary of State. In practice, it goes to the Planning Inspectorate, who, which is an agency of the Secretary of State. And then they will set a date or they will appoint an inspector and they have to do that, I think, within about four weeks of receiving the note the, the note of the submission. And then and then the inspector will set a date uh, for hearings. And unlike the appeals for planning, the hearings are uh, inquisitorial. In other words, the inspector will call people that, from whom he wishes to receive further information or clarification. And the inspector will ask the questions. There is no cross examination in a local plan inquiry. So, well, some may go there before they have a decision as to um, whether or not the, the plan review is approved. I believe that, unlike other planning matters, there is a, a, a statutory time scale. So, uh, I'm not quite, it's, I think it's about the hearings have to take place within something within six months-ish. I wouldn't be certain exact, but it's, I think there is a formal time frame, assuming that the uh, document is still um, has not been withdrawn. Uh, Councillor Woodhams. You, you'll forgive me, I'm trying to absorb all the information yeah. as you did it first. You mentioned that the document wasn't uh, uh, referenced to Health Board. So- um, It would have been submitted that it wasn't. No, so um, there is a statutory duty to cooperate, and given that that is in a, a legislation ten years ago, it referred to uh, the clinic. Well, it's, it referred to the predecessor of the clinical commissioning group, mm -hmm. and since then, the clinical the, the what body, whatever body that was, it's been that was superseded by the clinical commissioning group, which has now been superseded by the integrated health board. But our assumption was that the statutory duty to cooperate mm -hmm. applied to the successor bodies. Mm -hmm. And it is clear, and it's explicitly clear from uh, correspondence that they have not they have not discussed this specifically with the health board. It is the health centre they, that was proposed for North East Action. Mm -hmm. um, and if the inspector finds that the duty to cooperate was not fulfilled, he has no alternative but to reject the local plan completely. Uh, because, yeah, well, you have to you, you don't start all over again, but you have to go back and, and, and address that point and other perhaps other points as well. You may wish to highlight, which reflects on your uh, I suppose, concerns and opinions at the outset that the local plan review document is rather flawed. Uh, yes, and and, and the uh, I, I haven't actually got a definitive no, uh, information on the number of pages of, of supporting evidence, but it was somewhere. 
above 10,000 pages, possibly closer to 20,000, I'm told. And that, knowing this, West Berkshire Council and being told about various mm. inconsistencies and flaws and so on, that would not cause the submission. They just went straight ahead. They explicitly state that they considered that there were no matters of, sub, uh, of substance raised in the consultation. Um, so so some, some of these matters can be addressed through what's called main modifications, where the inspector effectively tells the council that they have to modify it in order to be approved. But this point on the, on, on the co cooperation with the health board does not fall into that category if he finds that it hasn't happened uh, because of the law, the legislation, he has to reject the plan as it stands. Well, that's very clear. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Another floor. Mm -hmm. All floors and centre floor. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a historic mm. comment. Mm. Okay, so that's any further comments on uh, agenda item six, which will no doubt be uh, coming back to us from time to time. Proposed noted. Thank you. Proposed noted. Council list is seconded. For those in favour, thank you very much. So the Great Western Railway Customer and Community Improvement Fund application. Mm -hmm. So if you remember about a year ago, uh, we heard rather late in the day that there was a, an annual grant scheme from Great Western Railway uh, for uh, community projects associated in some way with the railway. And we put together somewhat quickly uh, a proposal for the way marking from the railway station to the town centre, which was not successful. So uh, this year we have been notified in fact, in advance of the formal opening of the uh, consultation of the, the call, uh, that uh, it's happening, uh, and we have an opportunity to put forward uh, the same or another or other and or other proposals. Um, so, um, I think probably that's uh, the, there's nothing particular we need to comment in the, in, that, in that letter. It just tells you that and goes through the process for submission and the deadline, which was the. 14th of May, 24th of May. Actually, it's the 25th. Okay. Well, anyway, it's, um, it's one meeting ahead. It's one meeting ahead. It's, up, it's after our next meeting, but before the meeting after that. So, that can we not simply repeat the previous? Um, I was going to. I was going to propose that we we, we resubmit it. We're hopefully with refinements because one of the problems last year was because of the short notice. We were unable to get uh, precise costings from West Berkshire Council for their element of installing the signage. Uh, and given we've got more time, uh, hopefully I have more time shortly, um, then uh, we, we might be able to get a more detailed costing, which might make the proposal stronger. But you mean why can we then? Why don't we uh, sort out the costing ourselves? Because there's no. There's so yes, we put this uh, because, because it's on highways furniture, so it has to be agreed by them, and probably that means it has to be put up by um, uh, some of it by bulk of highways or, or the signage contractor. But anyway, uh, the point is uh, that you know, they will need to agree the the, 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 the site, the specifics of the sign, which will affect the cost. And I, I did some rather ballpark estimates last time. Um, I don't assume we start really better. Yeah, so so I, 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 I have to admit that, this, that we, we've known this for about a week, but uh, things have been rather busy, um, not only uh, electorally, but also um, professionally. So uh, hopefully let's get to this later this week. So uh, if we agree, can we agree to, uh, to, well, we're noting, it says noting the information. Uh, can we, in addition, agree that uh, for me to develop a to refine the proposal that we made last year and bring it back to the next proposed first meeting of oh, um, uh, so yeah, I, I mean, just looking at other possibilities mm. for the station. I mean, yeah. have we accepted that with the amount of funding available that that's the best um, use of resources? I'm just thinking of other things that have been so, highlighted, yeah. like like toilet facilities, like yeah. the additional. Um, ticket machines. So, so we, 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 I did go through this uh, with the deputy clerk. So the ticket machines is out of scope because that is something that will be done by Great Western Railway itself. Okay. Uh, the toilets uh, are probably out of budget, but certainly beyond the time beyond dealing with in the time frame because you'd need to go through planning, approval, and so on. So I think in the time scales that we've got. Yeah, and I'd also had feedback from West Berkshire officers that it might be considered as a big 
a bigger package for redevelopment of the station at some okay. point in the future. So yeah. well, that's, that's good. To know. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the point is, given given where we are, uh, this is the one which is uh, feasible to put forward a proposal, which because it does have to be fully clear. There is actually a it's a, it's a it's a somewhat strange system. There is actually a two stage approval, so you, you get shortlisted and you can put in additional information in, but we do need to be fairly precise on costings and and agreement of the relevant parties in order to go and get get to the second stage. There were three hundred. Um, applications last mm -hmm. year, of which about 40 were awarded oh, money, yeah. so it is quite a, um, a bit competitive. And they seem to range between about two and a half thousand pound mm -hmm. amount to up to about 70 to 80 thousand pounds. Um, mm -hmm. On a wide range, mm -hmm. yeah. So I think one of the advantages of uh, putting in a low one is that it's sort of likely to get approved in order to complete the budget, mm -hmm. if, if, if possibly. Mm -hmm. What, do you know the time scale of the package that might involve other improvements? No, I think that's another. I think that's another uh, the year of due course in this case. I was proposing what you um, yeah considered to do. Yeah, so to uh, to note this, but to request me to uh, develop the current the, the proposal for the signage, mm -hmm. and I think I would also be able to add uh, a second route mm -hmm. into um, uh, Colthrop. Which I didn't have time to to mark to, to, to survey and uh, mark up the signs, and you, you can see the detail if you if you want to get permission to get access to a parish online, and it, it, then the the map showing all of the, the details of where the signs are and uh, is available on that. Did you want to second? We've got well, I second seconded that was second seconded and thirded, uh, and those in favour of that course of action. Thank you. <laughs> So, moving on to planning applications. Um, planning application number one. Oops. Okay, so. This is 8 Bolingbroke Way, um, a proposal to um, build a two-storey side extension um, and demolish a garage. Now, you may recall we have seen this before, um, back in December 22. Um, so the history behind the property was they were granted permission for a hydrotherapy pool in the rear of the garden. Uh, um, in May 2022, then there was an application submitted to um, build this extension and demolish a garage. Then that was withdrawn, um, and now they've resubmitted the application. But having looked at it, it doesn't look like anything has changed from the previous application. So if I just go back and refresh your minds on on it. Um, so it's at the end of a cul-de-sac, um, this property here, and they're looking to extend here and demolish a garage here. Um, and they look like they're indicating this as parking for three here and a parking space there. Um, So this is the existing ground floor um, and the upper floor of which they've only indicated two bedrooms. I'm assuming there's a couple more over here. Um, this is the existing elevation, uh, front elevation, and the rear elevation, and then Here we're looking at the proposed front elevation here with a garage door. Um, that's the rear. And the proposal is to have a store, garage, a cloakroom, and a utility added to the side, and then two bedrooms and a bathroom over the top of this extension. 
Um, <laughs> now, so this is Bollingbrook Way. Um, it's this one here. Mm -hmm. And so it's looking at slotting that extension in there. Now, there was some confusion last time when the town council responded to it. Um, it was um, when considered in December, <clears throat> the council objected on the following grounds uh, to object on the grounds of lack of clarity of the intention of the development proposal, specifically regarding the demolition of the existing garage, because it was unclear um, whether the garage was adjacent yeah. to another garage. Um, so, also had highways have responded on the uh, yeah. on this current application, um, and they still have concerns raised. Um, did you want to have a little read through that? Well, I was looking at the, the, the mm. sentence at the very bottom, which which I was wondering about uh, looking at the, the the aerial photograph because uh, no, the the one that you should the Google yeah Google one mm. because it looks to me uh, it's that the land in front of that property is is in fact the access is a shared access to the adjacent property. So I went and took a site trip this morning mm. and took a couple of photos just because it was mm. really unclear because we mm. can't get up there on Google Maps because it doesn't go. So this is the cul-de-sac. So mm. they're proposing three spaces in front of the property. This garage seems to be attached to this garage, mm. which I'm assuming is theirs. So this garage possibly is mm. theirs. So they've got to demolish half a garage. Mm. Um, and then you've got this car going at an angle, presumably to that Gary. I'm not mm. sure. Um, yeah. The also I noted that the orange site notice. Um, you have to go up the cul-de-sac and round the corner here, and it's on the fence on the um, gate of the property. Um, and that's not a public road. Mm. So, so it's up there. <clears throat> no, there's no street sign, there's no mm. pavement, there's no lighting, so I think it's not adopted. Mm -hmm. well, what the rules say about the, I mean, there's lampposts, so you expect the orange notice beyond the lampposts so everybody can see it. Yeah. That those affected by the application may be all yeah. around. Yeah, well, there may be. Yeah, around yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, so yeah, yes. from whatever way, inside, we should, yes. that should be a time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so um, other than the highways um, concerns, right? Uh, response to the consultation there's been no representations on this um, i just clarify chairman are you saying there's no comments from neighbors no right thank you but um well, that would be any, any neighbors that um ha had some sort of vision around corners because or, or read page 35 of the new Rubric news <laughs> or, or or subscribe to hugo fox mm. <laughs> yeah, did you say by the beginning, there seemed to be no real change in this application to the one that was previously rejected. No, because Did we object to that application. Yes, um, objected on the grounds of lack of clarity of the intention of the development proposal, specifically regarding the demolition of the existing garage. Um, so these are the current plans, which they were originally. 8th of November mm -hmm. 2022 submitted. They're the most current ones that are up online. So they're all ones mm. that would have been looked at Before. when we considered yeah. it in December. I've done so, that across. No, in effect, it's the demolition of the pair of semi-detached. No, it's one, it's one, one half. 
Well, it's not demolition of anything. It's, it's in a four. Well, what, 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 demolition of a garage. Sure. Demolition, demolition of a garage. Yes. There's two yeah, story well, side extension yeah. and dem demolished garage. Yeah. Well, 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 what I was saying is like having a pair of, I use the phrase, semi mm. garages. Oh, yeah, yeah. Houses. Mm. Yeah. Like, the other, the, other point is, the other point is that um, because they haven't drawn the other bedroom, we don't know explicitly how many bedrooms there are and whether there is sufficient parking for that number of bedrooms. But as you say, um, uh, there would be at least, well, I would say probably, probably two bedrooms and a bathroom in that area. Mm, yeah, it might be, but the, the, at least two, possibly three bedrooms, uh, plus a bathroom, depends if there's an ensuite or whatever, but it's at least, that would make it at least a six bedroom house. Um, I think, I, I say we should be object to using the same grounds, but there yeah. doesn't seem to be any um, uh, change of the previous application and the point I made about yeah. the so orange that's, notice not being properly displayed. So I think there's two two additional points to that, which is the orange notice not being properly displayed, and we it, it is unclear how many bedrooms there are, and therefore whether the parking is, is um, sufficient for that uh, according to the council's policy. Yeah. Do we need a proposal for that? Uh, was, that was that your? Uh, that was my proposal. So you're seconding thank that. Thank you. And those in favour of that, it's course of action. Thank you. So, Mallard's Reach. So, Mallard's Reach. Um, so, the proposal is for a loft conversion with the addition of three roof lights to the rear roof slope and four roof lights to the front roof slope to create an extra living study space and bathroom. Um, so this is the property. Um, it's there. There's a, they've noted that there's a precedent in the area pretty much opposite, which also has Bellux windows and mm -hmm. there's already some that have Bellux windows there. Um, so it's in a cul-de-sac. Um, that's their proposal mm. with the roof lights. <laughs> um, so this is the existing ground floor, <coughs> which there'll be no change to. Mm -hmm. um, it's the existing first floor <coughs> in the loft. And then plan is to, sorry, it's existing, so um all right so they changed internally to go up another floor level we've got a study bedroom one two three four bedrooms and then up into the loft area where they're proposing a living area a study nook i guess to the landing and a bathroom with the velux lights three to the rear four to the front um, like so. Um, What's a house view, Mark? With that, with the height of that loft, <laughs> that, the <laughs> second floor. <laughs> so this is the coldy sack. You will see. There's a couple with yeah. roof lights already in the. And hmm. um, so somewhere else, there as well. There's one there, and I believe it's this property here. Mm -hmm. I mean, the external change as this goes through will simply be the addition of the <laughs> no other visible extension line. Right. No external change of the part of the river. Mm -hmm. no. mm -hmm. Okay. So we propose no objections. Yes. I'll second no objection. Those in favour of no objections. Thank you very much. So number three, the uh, English barn. Do you have to leave the room? 
the financial um, <laughs> so I'm aware. Um, so the English bar one. So this is the application for the conversion of an agricultural barn into a residential accommodation. Um, it's a detached grade two listed agricultural timber building set back from the highway on Chapel Street, which I'm sure you are all aware. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, so I believe they've had, they've applied in the past and they've mm -hmm. had a, um, it refused, but uh, I think they've readdressed the mm. certain things from that and so reapplying again um so could you gently clarify why it was refused previously um, and have there been sufficient changes so we, so the town council considered it in july last year um and the comments that were made then were uh, Thatcham Town Council has no objections in principle to the development, but objects to the proposed two metre brick wall abutting the pavement on the southern side of the development um, and requests that the wall be lowered and set back from the pavement so as not to fully impair the visibility of the listed building, which is an important land, local landmark to the town's heritage. Um, and then there were other reasons as well. We know if through this application has been achieved. Um, let me have a quick look. <laughs> okay, um, so where are we? Da, 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 da. Is it this one, yes. am I missing one of the? No, it's in here. So we've got the design and access statement here, and in this, they've addressed um, the front wall with a number of photographs going back over the years. Uh, you can't see it in this photograph, um, but there was a wall here and you can see here in front of the property. Um, and they've gone on to say, So across the site, it's important to note that access to the English barn has changed over the years, which was originally fronted head on and can clearly be evidenced in the sh as shown in photographs one to four above. During the barn's original use, it would have occupied the entire frontage on the now A4 and photograph three categorically shows the site framed with a brick wall estimated about two metres high onto the highway with further agricultural buildings to the west aspect further supported as shown in photograph two, that the wall defining the site was indeed an original feature associated with the English barn. The most significant change is between that of photograph three and four, which clearly explains that the agricultural buildings supporting the barn have been demolished and replaced with a large residential apartment block and the introduction of the access road serving the care home. Uh, they state that they believe this brick wall has been demolished to accommodate the above developments and that it should be reinstated as part of the barn's historic value, despite the concerns raised with the pre-application response uh, dated January 23. But it is not that it should not form part of the street frontage as it would interfere with the readability of the listed building. We have significantly improved the access to the site by taking the main entrance off the Broadway and vehicular access shall be stepped back from the highway by five metres with any gates opening into the site and not over pedestrian pavement. The vehicle can safely drive onto the site and turn around and exit face on and removes any ingress and egress onto the busy A4. Um, the site plan uh, shows the reintroduction of this important brick wall and a new access point. There will be three parking spaces allocated to the barn, which is adequate for a four bedroom property. <laughs> um, there will be resin paving, directly to the entrance with a graded upslope to suit the difference in external levels. So that was specifically with regard to the wall. Um, so can I, can I just clarify? Forgive me, I didn't come uh, too, sorry. too well, but are they, are they showing old photographs showing the height of the brick wall? And what they're, they're doing now is saying we are reinstating 
that, that brick wall. That's what they're indicating. That, um, so I'll look at the plans in a second. So the, the clearest photo of the brick wall that was previously there is here, and they've estimated it was two meters high. Um, Which is six foot. It doesn't go all the way across there, does it? There's no place. No. There. So there's still mm. a visual view of the building from the behind it. Because I believe now it goes round in that way, isn't it? Yeah. So, up to. Um, that's the clearest view I've got of the previous wall. Mm. Um, and that's it today. Jen, I, I noticed yeah. that um, on the other side, that the the properties on the adjacent corner mm. have brick pillars with wrought ironwork, yeah, which doesn't then impact and impose on the street mm. scene. And I, I I would have thought they would come in with that. Mm. Uh, I think currently it has has press boarded fence. You see yeah. that that's that's mm. what I'm seeing opposite. And, yeah. and I would have thought that would have been more appropriate uh, to have on the on the opposite mm. corner. And we have a photograph of what's there now today because that's the yard, isn't it? I'm sorry, I haven't got a yeah, more current. Have a site well, I was driving past it and I thought probably good. not to take that one out of the fence. At the moment, it's nice and new and something yeah. then has changed from yeah. that mess and we've got there was there for years and years. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that fence come right to the edge of the pavement without that uh, um, meter or so um, brass verge, which uh, mm -hmm. is. Because yeah. that's what I would like to see the same. It is that you know, uh, that was only that was only a site fencing, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Um, mm. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it does go pretty close to that uh, mm. to the boundary now. Mm. Yes, uh, right. There are uh, there, there are some recent photographs on the internet in various places. What's the feeling I was on a straight brick wall right up? To mm. Where the pavement begins would be, you know, an imposing, you know, pleasant uh, feature. It should either be set back or broken up, or so. That's what it is suggested. But, um, we just have a look at the photograph again showing the pillars, the brick wall, and the wrought <coughs> iron. That's right. So it's a, it's a brick wall, up, mm. so high, and then wrought yeah. iron and the pillars. I, I think I think it, it complements the site, whereas a brick wall that high, set probably quite close to the pavement, it, it does impact on the street scene. Um, and, and so you've got you've got the start of um, that, the, uh, the the brick wall and pillars and all yeah. work. And I think if that was continued, um, I do have to say that I noticed the foundations of a thing with previous brick wall in that photograph. Mm. Which does butt right up to the uh, mm -hmm. road. So um, I think that probably works for well, well. Although I have to say that, that that particular type of brick doesn't look to me to be contempor contemporary to the barn. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I mean, no matter what, what was there in the past, yeah. we should be looking for good planning. This is the centre of Thatcher. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It needs to be of the highest quality. Yeah, 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 it's important. It's important. Jim, I, I would like to, to uh, ask the committee to consider, I won't propose it, but to consider uh, similarity with the, uh, with the brick wall and the water and the opposite, and which also may continue what is, what is you know, tucked on the right hand side. Yeah. Um, that may be just set back where you've got the grass showing now, just enough to, to reduce the impact on the street scene. That water pipe come pump. Must be preserved as well. Yes, that's and, been and repainted. Yes, yeah. so. yeah, that's, that's been repainted black. Repainted as, a, very yeah, as a feature. Yeah. yeah. So that's my uh, hints without making a proposal. Would you like to make a proposal? Sorry. So, um, I'm just thinking about it. You have no objections to anything else with regards to the previous one. It was just literally the wall. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So um, I, I will turn to uh, Councillor, given, given the declarations of interest, um, yes. uh, turn to Councillor Crumley if you would like to make a proposal. 
Um, you're, you're, well, if to paraphrase, I believe that you're you're requesting that the the wall is not solid but has uh, ironwork which matches what's on the opposite side of the access road and indeed on the opposite uh, on the side of the property. Yes, correct, and to ensure that the um, that uh, yeah. the mileage post and the uh, automate water pu um, mm. pump. Um, well, they're actually on highway stand, so they yeah, they, they will be like, preserved. I think it's worth mentioning. Yeah, yeah, that, so yeah. yeah. The, um, so is this application just for the wall? Mm -hmm. um, it's a reapplication, but the the council has given their comments on the previous one for the route for the. In fact, I think the previous one was a pre-application, wasn't it? So it wasn't mm -hmm. formal. But the point is that the council has made its comments on on the application as a whole, and therefore, it's really only purpose on us commenting on the things that were left open by that application. Because if the council's accepted, if West Berkshire Council's accepted them, we didn't object previously. It's difficult for us to raise a, a new objection at this point. So this is simply the issue of the. I think I think mainly to do with the wall because I think all the, the rest of the application is probably all internal, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I think um, there's very little potential for its use as a barn in that particular location. Yeah. yeah. And so in the last time, yeah. the Statcham Town Council had no objections in principle to the development, yeah. um, but objected to the two metre mm -hmm. brick wall. Yeah. Yeah. And I add then that this being a, a centre of town, it should be treated mm -hmm. as a particularly sensitive visual site. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, I think, unfortunately, technically, it's outside of the conservation area, though it's very really visible for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the moment, it's almost my catching from the conservation area. Well, it was I catching for you they were, because of the mess of the site? And the, no, I was thinking about the temporary, temporary orange mm -hmm. structure. I was thinking of <laughs> <laughs> so, in the proposal, mm. would that be a no objections again on in principle, but with a principle? And, and if there's any internal work involved, we haven't got any objections to internal modifications, mm -hmm. as far as I'm aware. So have I given you enough? To... And then, um, but we we do ask that the that the wall is of a uh, similar style to what is present on the opposite side of the road and indeed at the side of their, that property. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you... I, I'm proposing that that helps. Thank you. Okay. If it's helpful, because I'm not standing again. Yeah. So I, I, I'm going to second. Thank you. And those in favour of that. Um, I'm going to abstain because uh, obviously I had closer connection than yeah, you know, I probably better yeah, yeah. probably in some case as well. Yeah, yeah. But you haven't actually uh, been been on the property with a uh, with tools, have you? Um, I have been okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Thank you. So moving on to um, sixteen Chapel Street. Yes. Uh, now this is a complicated one. So, um, if I recall the history here, this the we have the development at the back. Has that been granted permission? I, I'm not sure. Oh, no, that gone to appeal? No, it went to appeal, which I believe it was. Ref no, it's been refused once, and then it went to appeal the second mm. time. And we had a site visit at that. Uh, we had a site visit at the time of the second refusal, I think. Mm. Um, or was it approved subject to the conditions? But anyway, the point is this one is to do with the uh, we, we we saw a a application uh, for a uh, decision on whether permission would be required for the dem dem demolition of the end property, and the council decided that permission was required, and this is that uh, application for permission. Yeah. So this is dealing with only with the. Um, only with the demol the, as the aspect of the proposal to do with the demolition of the property, which is required to give enough width for access mm. onto that site. Mm. And I think, in fact, the, 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 the application is, is only to do with certain aspects of that demolition as well, isn't it? It's not the principle, it's only the... Uh, prior approval is sought to demolish number 16, yeah. Chapel Street, end of terrace, two-story dwelling, um, right. following that which you explained in yes. the previous um, one. Um, so yeah, that's. Well, I think 16. the pre. I think the pre app stated what was needed to be approved. So. Mm -hmm. um, so now this is what's come forward is the mm -hmm. fact that you've got that's the existing um, property and they're looking to demolish this one and then mm -hmm. I think they've been working, haven't they, on the other? 
they have yes, yes they have window. renovated and replaced yeah. the windows and uh, not entirely yeah. historically but mm -hmm. um and then yes this proposal mm. for the the uh, or what they, the two other existing properties that they those plans without the number 16 there. so we go to it's literally just in the way Okay. So looking at taking this one out here. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I do believe I was copied in on the email uh, from Councillor Jeffrey, um, where he was. Sorry, sorry, because <laughs> I'm looking at my things. Oh, <laughs> Thank you so much. It's cross party. <laughs> oh, so. Um, just to note that I've received an email, I was copied in on an email that Councillor Jeffrey sent to uh, Plan Apps um, mm. uh, requesting that the application be called to commit committee because of the, his, he feels the historical importance of these properties yeah. um, on, mm. the, the high, on the front mm. in the Bath Road and so forth, um, and a unique characteristic, and so that's... Mm -hmm. Where he, I think you were copied. Yes. Yeah. But John, John, I, I, I do remember this uh, mm. coming to West Berkshire House East and there, many mm. the, and uh, but I'm not quite sure how far. Uh, although this this relates only to mm. uh, potential solution to knock down the the end. Mm. Mm. Um, but we did we did uh, debate this, um, and we considered that the the actual building itself dates back somewhere like the 1930s. No, 1830s. Sorry? I think it's 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. the end property is now built, boarded up. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I still have that view that, uh, you know, this is part of that rich history. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and to knock, I, I don't know quite how you knock down the end of the terrace. Mm -hmm. uh, and you did raise this because you, you wondered how, that, um, mm -hmm. you know, you could escape without the rest of it falling down, which is a bit tricky. But the, uh, the applicant was uh, of the opinion that they could do it without mm -hmm. the... Uh, Mm. The other terrace falling down, <laughs> uh, but um, I, I don't know what happened in that highways. Uh, the site, I think they have to knock this down to improve the site goals. It's so they, 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 one, one of the reasons that the previous appeal was refused was that the road roadway was, was too narrow mm -hmm. because. Um, you have to be able to pull off if you're if you're trying to enter the site. You have to be able to pull off quickly to avoid causing an obstruction and danger. Mm. And the without knocking this down, you would only have a single lane between the houses. So the reason for knocking it down is to get a, a, a road a road that is wide enough for two vehicles to pass on the entrance. That's right. Um, I, I mean, I don't know whether it's strong enough to consider the history <coughs> uh, of this property. Mm. Uh, it is with me because. Um, I have a keen interest in retaining mm. uh, historical homes. Yeah. Uh, and they mean a lot to us. Mm. But I'm not, I'm not sure if that's strong enough uh, to raise objections. Well, it's strong enough to raise objections, but it's, um, but it's whether up to the, the uh, West Berkshire Committee whether it's strong enough to justify refusal is the, is the key point. So, um, so can you move the total out a bit to the left so we can see what so that? Let's see. So, so the property is proposed to be demolished as well with the white door and yes. two windows. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we well, we just hope that the rest of it will well, follow and fall down. I, I think I think I think that that bit of it uh, we can nowadays we can rely on people to, to deal with that. Uh, what I'd be more worried about is whether the um, rebuilt wall would actually uh, maintain that, even if they. We use the same bricks, whether it would actually retain the appearance, the historic appearance. I'm looking at that chimney stack. I can't quite, quite work out 
Yeah. If the chimney stack is part of the and something to be demolished, it is. It, it is. It is because you can see the other one. The other two has got a fair chimney there. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It's, it's the above the. It's, I think that's to do with perspective. Yeah. It looks very much like it's the end of the the house that's going to be remaining. Yeah. But uh, it's, it looks like it's right in the middle of the. Uh, well, it's always possible. The, it's always possible that the, because at the, at the time it was built, that the chimney breast goes back into that house rather than into the. Yeah. Of, yeah. yeah. But anyway. Um, so, can I just say, it's used here as pipe and traction mm. uh, frontage with the, uh, mm. uh, the decorative uh, brickwork mm. and the colour and the pattern of it. Um, not something you look at very much because most of the time you're just driving by without um, looking at the, uh, the properties. Uh, but that doesn't mean they're any less attractive mm. or any reason for them simply or apart from just to be demolished. Yeah. I, only spoiled by the satellite visuals. Mm. But it looks even more yeah. impressive now it's got the new white, the new uh, front doors on. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I think we're moving to uh, making objection to, to to the demolition of this property. Um, and uh, we didn't need to give some ground. So the point is the historic nature of it which uh, is right on the boundary of the conservation area and forms a part of the setting of the land. Is a, is a planning term, the setting of the conservation area. Yes. And uh, really ought to have been included. Yeah. Uh, valuable historical yeah. heritage. Uh, uh, it's an area that might at some stage be included. Well, we, we can't say that in planning terms. It, it, no. If it's not there, it's not there. Um, I'm trying, that's why I'm trying to find a present tense, a present tense uh, phrase. Um, uh, yes, and uh, the given the location that, that uh, I, I think that removing a third removes more than a third of the um, uh, of the character. Yeah, exactly. and, and finally, uh, I would also comment that we are concerned as to whether the uh, restored end wall would be capable. It would be possible to maintain the period appearance of a completely rebuilt end wall. Can we raise the query about the chimney? Because well, I know what you said, but we haven't been inside to look. But I don't think it doesn't. I think I think that's probably in the scheme of things, it's not a particularly. Hmm. Well, I guess that's a bit of. Um, perhaps we could say that that we regard the chimney as part of the character of the site as well, and that needs to be retained. Yes. Um, I mean, it's probably got it's probably got the oak roof beams that go right across the yeah. length oh, of the yeah. of the roof. Yeah. Um, there's certainly yeah. going to be structural challenges. But if you, see, even yeah. the is, but if you see what they do nowadays when they, they demolish an entire building apart from the front wall, but yeah. the third wall, wall, wall law is high. There's people living in that property next door. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. But it's, it's, anyway, um, I'm sure that the developer would find ways of dealing with that if uh, he's granted permission. He stands to gain. Historic culture. Yeah, yes. That's do you have that? Uh, that's. Quite a bit of that. So we've got valuable historic nature on the boundary of the conservation area, um, removing one third. And, and the setting and, and the setting of the uh, of the conservation area. Did you did you copy Councillor Crumbers? Yeah, we, we, we are just going through it, and that right. just an addition to the first element. Um, removes a third of the character from the three properties. Of course, a third of the character. Yeah. Character um, and with the restored end wall, would it keep the period appearance of the properties? Yeah. So, so we phrase that that we, yeah. we we are concerned that it would be impossible to maintain the appearance, um, retain the period the period appearance of, a, of that, that solid end wall, and we think that the chimney kind of we think the chimney is a part of the character that needs to be retained. Yeah, which we. Interesting if it's not part of this, but if it's part of that building. Yes, I've got about yeah. four pieces. Um, okay. And then, also, can you mention um, the cultural history? I think it's the description. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which has mm -hmm. So, if this is going to uh, the um, uh, to Eastern Area Planet, it's been, if it's been called in, then I guess that. Um, we will have the opportunity to someone will have, from the new, new committee will have the opportunity to speak in person. Mm -hmm. 
because we have our first full council meeting before the uh, committees are appointed at West Berkshire Council. So, well, okay, did you want to vote on that? Uh, so, yeah, we need to vote on that. Uh, so, opposed. opposed from Councillor Woodhams, Deputy okay. Councillor Brumley, and those in favour. Thank you. That one's unanimous. <clears throat> 26 Roman Way. Mm -hmm. oh, get this right for me when I sign this. <laughs> well, they'd have this annoying habit of, of having an A4 document and then stick a, a, an A1 plan in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Right, so 26 Roman Way is an application for a side and rear extension and alterations. Um, so mm -hmm. it's this property here. They note that they've got three parking spaces to the front. Three parking spaces to the front. Let me make that bigger again. Um, so they're looking to extend along the side here at two storeys and have a single storey <coughs> at the back here with a flat roof. And then we have to shrink it again. So this is the existing elevations of the property. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the proposed. So this is slightly set back from the front. Um, Two story extension there and the single story flat roof extension behind the rear. Um, so they currently have, um, it's difficult to see this, isn't it? Um, the existing is they have a sitting room, dining room, kitchen, uh, downstairs, and two bedrooms and a bathroom upstairs. And they're looking to extend out to the side, put in a, an additional WC here, um, retain the sitting room at the front, but move the kitchen to the center of the property. And then in the extension to the rear, have a dining area and a seating area, snug, I guess, um, and a utility out to the side. And then when they go to the above, <clears throat> um, they are looking to uh, go out this way and to a bedroom to the rear of the property mm. there. Um, we have a look at where it is. Are there any comments from the audience? No, I haven't got anything else. No okay. representations. Um, so, yes, yeah, this property just here. To, to, I think it's yeah. that one, yes. that one there. Yeah. Um, which I believe is this one here. Is that 26? Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, it's, it did say on the application that it would be red brick to match existing, though that looks, I don't know, I don't know whether that's still <laughs> painted like that or. Well, that, that's, that's not only painted. That's yeah. got this. Could this fake, that's fake, fake stone? Yeah. Uh, like. mm. Can you go? Can you look at the other half of this? Uh, this the other uh, half of the semi-detached mm -hmm. along the road. So, because um, just sort to point out that this this house also has had some work done. Nothing like as much, mm -hmm. but there is a new porch on the front of that one. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's all. But there has been work on that house. Mm -hmm. Um and. If you look along the road, <clears throat> they have there's quite a few precedents of mm -hmm. extensions to that's the side. The property, that one. Yeah, was it? Yeah, I think there were some others. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Mixture. Yeah, and if you go right right into Hennet Lane, you'll we'll find another property which has been extended. Mm -hmm. With parking standards. So, um, comments. Does it meet parking standards? Uh, um, it's going to be a three bedroom from a two bedroom property, and they've yeah. said three parking spaces to the front. So, yes, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. You've still got, do you still have access to the back door? Yeah, they, they, were, they were, it was now, but they, they, had, they had retained it. Let me have a look. Can you see a front view? Number 26, Arthur Street, see? Yeah. This is one of the one with the yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, yes, I share concern about the uh, access. Well, so there is, it does, it does, if you look at the, the that thing, the, the, there were lines to show, yeah, mm. so it's, it's half in width, but there is access. That's something yeah. to get small, the small side of the wheel there. Mm. <laughs> Chairman, based on what I've seen, I raise no objection, but there is raised no point. Second, yeah, that's 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 second, second one. No objection. That's in favour of no objection. That's unanimous as well. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Any matters? Right. Well, that, oh, cancel the, the bond property, which we're not considering. 78 Burris Bank Road. No further objections. Thank you. Okay. Any matters since the publication of the agenda? There is one that I'd like to bring up for a moment. my papers again. And to uh, inform you that because of the, uh, the timing of the, 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 full, the meeting of full council and then having to set the agenda after that, the next meeting of planning and highways might be for another four weeks. No Members of the public are um, uh, it's still welcome at the Wooden. Right, sorry. Yeah. I'm just trying to keep up with where I've got to. Um, right, planning matters <laughs> rising since the agenda now. Um, I had notification of this, which I thought I um bring to your attention um, because you've considered it previously. Um, we've had some extra information on, on uh, Francis Bailey Primary School. Um, so <clears throat> um, I think when it was considered by the council, um, you originally objected to it um, on the reasons of Thatcham Town Council supports the replacement of the teaching block and the general design of the new building. However, the council feels that it must object to the application as it stands, as there is insufficient information in the design and access statement and plan on zero carbon performance of the proposed new building. The school's output specification that is referenced in the design and access statement provides guidance on minim minimising carbon footprint, but not any specific requirements. The council would support approval of the application provided that this is subject to a condition that it has zero carbon performance uh, in accordance with RIAM excellent building standards as described in Regulation 19 of the local plan for non-residential buildings. Um, so <clears throat> we've received an application in, um, mm -hmm. well, it's on the original application, but with more information that's been submitted um, with um, comments to be made by the 5th of May. Um, I'm just seeing whether I thought I'd put it on here, but I could be wrong. <clears throat> well, here we go. This is the one. So we have... I put something else. So they've included additional information um, on Suds Design Report. I can never say that word. <laughs> um, and then they've also issued a statement regarding the Breen Excellence Zero Carbon. So I thought I'd show you the statement that they've um, mm -hmm. come back with so you can have a read of that. Um, Do you wish me to read it out or do you want to read? What's a demountable building? One of them temporary mm -hmm. pick up and take away. Yeah, it's a porter cabin, I think, or the, the, mm -hmm. the classroom equivalent of a porter cabin. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you were, yeah. mm.
It needs a mistake. Yeah. I don't know which, I mean, it's not for us to do that business model, but I wonder how much extra green requirements impose in terms of cost and what the payback is, because also it's going to reduce the energy consumption of the building going forward. Mm. Uh, the last thing you want to do is replace a crappy old building with another building that actually doesn't meet mm. standards which, are, which reduces energy consumption and reduce the cost of operation, which is also mm. what Green's about, as well as it being uh, environmentally mm. good outcome. Uh, it should lead to a better um, usage of energy. Well, I guess the, the problem is that schools can't um, uh, limit it in the ability to take out loans to cover that because they've got to pay the capital mm -hmm. in order to get a revenue saving. So, um, because we had a previous case for Kenneth School, which is the same trust, do you have to recall what we did to that? I think we. I think we objected. I think we objected. Yeah. 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 Basis the same so as I say, so say you'd already objected on it. Yes, is their response. Yes. Mm. So, so, so where's this up to? Is it gone to the West Berkshire? So we we objected uh, on the grounds that further information was needed, and they this is the further the information, information that they supplied. So the, the I think it, the same application is still pending. Mm. Yeah. But uh, this is further information on which we are able to comment. So that was the previous. Mm. In back in January meeting. Yeah. So I will be reading our center last time that we were supporting the replacement of the tablet. But, but on the basis that it would meet the, the Bream excellent building standards, which I think is also a, a, condi a condition for West Berkshire Council. Mm -hmm. It's in the yeah. you know, recognizing whether it isn't. We can't just push it back, can we? But I mean, can we ask for information about how what, what the full cost of meeting this standard involves? I don't think that's within the planning system. There's not there's not a, not a, a consideration for planning. You have to um, not explicitly. I think the point is. Um, My recommendation is that basically our decision was that we were we were objecting uh, on the uh, we would support it on the basis that it that it that we got confirmation it met Bream excellence it doesn't meet Bream excellence mm -hmm. uh, there's no planning reason to change that modification that 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 conclusion yeah um, very sadly but it's a, a very tricky situation I, I think we need to think of some words to so. I think it says if you wish to make comment. Yes. Um, you have that comment in already. Yeah. So I think I think that um, I think we just have to say that with regret, uh, the there are no planning. The the additional information has uh, well the, the additional information is not given us is uh, not uh, uh, achieved provided the the information that we were seeking. And therefore, with great regret, we uh, we, we we have to uh, maintain our objection. Yes. Yeah. Is that a proposal? Yes. Yeah, I'd be happy to second yeah. that. So we, we've got to take these climate challenges yeah. seriously as well. With proactive. Can I can I also suggest that perhaps given that this is the second occasion that's occurred, that we should ask the clerk to write the letter to Laura Farris. Pointing out that we're in putting this invidious situation. Yeah. Also, I think if the school, well, they are obviously taking it seriously, but they, they might have, you know, sent a representative. Well, they don't necessarily know um, that um, that they were going to be there for this meeting. I suspect that they are focusing their in their efforts on the West Berkshire Council. Mm -hmm. um, I guess this one, that one might get called up with Corbyn as well. Yes. Mm. So, uh, are you happy to? Yeah, I'll to, 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 that. That was, in terms of writing the letter, you're happy to, um, to, to, to write that or to get yeah, the clerk to write that? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think in, in current 
current time, it's probably better if you write it yourself without um, input from councillors. Because we're going to be similar situations with other schools. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. If you could highlight, this is the second time that we've been put in this position. Did we vote on that? Uh, I'm just going to say, just waiting for the clerk to finish <laughs> writing down what we're what we're what we're um, uh, asking there. Okay. Okay, you've got that. So, uh, do you want to read out what you're? So I've got. It's with regret the additional information has not provided the answer that we were looking for. Um, yeah. yeah. Or well, the reassurance. The reassurance effort. Yeah. And then, and then uh, the second part is to ask the, 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 the deputy clerk, together with the, the, the town clerk, to write a letter to Laura Ferris drawing attention to this uh, situation, which invidious situation is the wording I used. Yeah. So uh, I propose that, and um, uh, do I have a seconder for that? Can we count the crummy and those in favour? Thank you very much. That's unanimous again. So can I raise another briefly raise another planning matter that? Um, that I received through Hugo Fox, which uh, you know the, the the system that the count the town council uh, subscribes to for receiving planning applications. So I see some things which are not sent to the town council, and there was a planning application which was approved very quickly for tree work on the plantation. And the interesting thing there is that I believe that the application was made by one of the residents. Um, uh, and I and understand for other reasons, for, for, for other conversations, that that is because the West Berkshire Council is unable to identify the um, the owners of the, of the various bits of that land. Where, where is that? Sorry? The plantation, or otherwise known as Piggy Wood. Piggy Wood. Oh, I see. And the plantation. The, it's called. This is that's it, that's its that, that's its really? formal title. Um, if you search the land registry for Piggy Wood, you won't find anything. Yes, so. So, 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 uh, there was it was most of it was pruning. I think one was going to be taken back a long way because it's basically because they're so large that they're overhanging the um, the neighbouring properties. Yeah, yeah there, there's a few under still behind me that the partly collapsed. Yeah, we're we'll going to see neighbouring the uh, properties. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay, so that's um, but those were in fact approved almost instantaneously because it was basically the. the the uh regards to the tree officer yeah okay um that's planning matters uh, so traffic management highways and road safety matters mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay so the first one was just to update yourselves that um i met with the um Principal Engineer mm. for the Environment last week. Could you speak? Um, sorry, Could yes, speak? apologies. <clears throat> so I spent I um met with West Berkshire Officer last week um to discuss the fact that we'd had some issues with reporting um highways defects and other problems um with West Berkshire Council and the fact that we were struggling with um what's the word? Um uh, cross reference responses. yeah yes. cross referencing the information that we were sending them and they were sending us back mm. um and getting timely responses and so forth mm. um so they we we spoke about the issues on both sides because you've got they're introducing the new report problem page they haven't migrated everything across yet um but uh, they are hoping that at some point we will have um, a system that you can report the problem on, um, drop a pin on the map location, um, or is it see if the problem has already been reported by someone else on that map. You can add to that map um, more details if you want to. Um, you can upload up to five photos and you can track the progress of the problem. Mm. Um, they said, please bear with them because it, as they say, it's sort of migrating and they're still, isu they're issuing old numbers 
and they've got some new numbers and we're trying to cross-reference them. So um, the front office have set up a spreadsheet that we're trying to manage and I'm going to improve on that hopefully before the next planning and highways meeting so I can get some better reporting coming back um, because at the moment um, we've got this item but it I can't draw down or interrogate it more um, which is what I'd like to do um, so <clears throat> so we've we're going to bear with West Berkshire. We're going to do what we can. Um, we'll hopefully be able to try and follow up with them on certain things. Um, they, we were saying that we weren't getting responses back um, and they did highlight that they'd had a problem where we, the second email response wasn't coming out to people, which they've rectified, I believe. So as far as I'm aware is once you've reported the problem, you should get an email back with a reference number, get a second email within 10 days um, following an assessment of the problem, which will either come back with things like response with no action required, uh, not a West Berkshire responsibility, um, the issue's already been reported, um, or it's been passed to so-and-so. Um, and then, in theory, you should then maybe get another further update or an update when it's completed. They're looking to... I think merge it with Volker Highways, uh, the Volker contractors, so that when a contractor has completed, I don't know, a pothole or something, that they then sign that off and then it goes on to the tracking and you can see that that's been then signed off. I'm not sure they're there yet with that part of it. Um, so, what else do I need to tell you? Um, Yeah, and then the other thing is just really, it's educating when people need to contact West Berkshire Council as opposed to Thatcher and Town Council, because at the moment we we get the queries in um, and then we pass them on to West Berkshire Council, but we're becoming the middle conduit, as it were. So encouraging uh, residents to where it's a West Berkshire Council issue, to report it themselves rather than Thatcher and Town Council reporting on their behalf um, because they will at least get all the updates directly to them as opposed to the updates coming to us and then us having to report back to um, the resident. Um, I guess in many cases they wouldn't know initially it was a West Park's no. issue, but if, if the mm -hmm. office here mm -hmm. tells you to deal directly with West Park, yeah. so I believe on occasion you sort of residents will call in and if we know it's a West Berkshire problem, then they'll be directed towards West Berkshire Council. But helpful people in front office will say, well, on this occasion, we'll do it on your behalf sort of thing. Um, but in future use, such and such. But um, ideally, if it's a resident, um, should really be reporting directly to West Berkshire Council because one, they can give better information they can pinpoint exactly where it is um, and they will get the feedback. Um, <clears throat> with us doing it, it's we'll get bits and pieces back and then we have to log it and then we have to chase it and log it and chase it and log it. Plus, um, we might report quite a few queries, um, whereas a resident will tend to probably just um, query one item in a specific area so they're only looking for one email coming back whereas we'll be having quite a few emails coming back and at the moment we struggle with tying up the reference numbers but we're working on how we can do that um, and and how to report back to you. Well, Chairman, um, may I thank David Grant for uh, having a meeting with the senior mm -hmm. I was an engineer, same engineer I had a chat with at West Berkshire Council, and he did promise to make the work come over. Um, so I'm glad to hear that things are being slowly ironed out. They've got mm -hmm. a brand new computer system, only half it's working in certain areas, not working mm -hmm. in certain other areas. Um, I do remember at a full council meeting, uh, Councillor Ardard Walter 
uh, mentioning, I think, um, or at least, um, shall we say, the mayor suggesting to Councillor Arbanagor that the leaflets be made available so that the town council could put them on the notice boards and have them surgeries for hand people making inquiries about fire uh, use abuse so that they can have a phone number or email address to contact West Bucks. Uh, but I don't think that's materialized. That's the, the report of problem. That's from the yeah. phone number mm -hmm. uh, or email address. Mm -hmm. So you can put it in the notice boards and, mm -hmm. and inform people who to contact about what. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think that needs to be chased in the administration. Mm -hmm. It's been extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. um, so the report problem, the tracking of fault online, mm -hmm. I just popped up on here. You get given a reference number, which generally starts with an E. Um, I've got sort of an example of uh, one that we had. So, uh, so they'll give you what it is, what we've told them, the description of where it is, and then apparently awaiting assessment. I did highlight this one that we've not received any further information on this one because that was back from February. Um, I also went through, these aren't necessarily uh, Thatcham Town Council ones, but I noticed where we have, I just had a look through. Um, this is one of mine, propped up on yeah. several occasions. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Same chap uh, complaining, commenting that there was this bubble that kept forming mm -hmm. outside, stitching, mm -hmm. and I made up with uh, mm -hmm. rain. Um, mm -hmm. So we just sent our response uh, yeah. to the judge. Yeah. This one isn't. Satisfied mm -hmm. it does. This yeah. one, this one isn't a Thatch and Pound Council one. It's somewhere else. Um, but this was, they've assessed it, um, and they've come back with comments. And this is what I would be hoping that we can then report back. But as I say, this isn't in our area. But that be the sort of thing I would be hoping mm -hmm. to to see, um, mm -hmm. to be able to report back. But well, um, I think it's, it, what, what you're saying is, is quite mm -hmm. key. If we had these leaflets when the councillors were attending surgeries and someone came up and said, What are you doing about this? Uh, or, or the one yeah. that don't have something, can the, the, uh, the resident uh, a leaflet with a contact number mm. or email address to report a problem or show or informative about how to report a problem using their own home computer? Mm. Uh, take an awful lot of work off here and hopefully we won't have this than this the things taking mm. over eight months. Uh, to achieve, mm -hmm. but of course, if people see things not being done, they'll probably come back to us anyway. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that might reduce our support mate. entirely. I okay. want to refer briefly to the chart. I could just uh, uh, yeah, it's a, a specific one. Right? I was going to go just just, just just very quickly. I did come through uh, the town centre this evening, and I'm pleased to uh, report that uh, the look left, look right, white painting is completed in all the areas where the crossing points are. Right. And Absolutely. your no entry no. is also right. tainted up. Right. So that's a fantastic. So as we also have an, also a look down so that people can see that the work's been done. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it took eight months, which yeah. I think is far too long. Mm. Mm. Okay, thank you. Okay. So um Anything else on specific highway things to report? Um, no, I don't think there was much more to update on that. Yeah. And I'll bring something um, in more detail, hopefully, hopefully to the next. Hopefully will diminish and uh, West France mm -hmm. will get on and do the job. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But thank you for Deputy for, uh, for preparing the chart mm -hmm. and uh, helping mm -hmm. us identify standing issues mm -hmm. in the last mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, may I again thank you very much for your meeting thank for you. this evening. Mm -hmm. Okay, so moving on to uh, mm -hmm. road closures. Mm -hmm. So we've got uh, to note that Crookham Hill in Thatcham will be closed on Wednesday the 3rd of May um, between the hours of 9.30 and 3.30. Uh, the closure is from its junctions with Chamber House Mill Lane and Burries Bank Road. The closure is to enable Volker Highways to carry out highway improvements on behalf of West Barks Council. Um, resident access will be maintained throughout. So that's that one. Um, and then we have 
Footpath yeah, footpath closure. Um, that will be so to note that footpath T H A T. We like you'll know which one this is. Thirty four one in Thatcham will be closed on the first of May to the first of November, twenty twenty three. The closure will be between its junction with Lower Way to its Lower Way footpath. Uh, uh, sorry, with Lower Way to its junction with the another footpath mm. the yeah. diversion route is expected to be by a lower way footpath so it's um in other words all of it yeah. basically all of it um yeah. to help with the um the new housing development down there so yeah so if i just ask for clarification on those footpath mm. designations so mm. 34 one is the path running from it's the one that goes diagonally across the field south of the lower way mm -hmm. Uh, going from lower way to that footpath that runs down to the fishing lake. Right, that's the diagonal one. It's, it is the diagonal one across the field that's been closed, yes. Yeah. The other thing to say is that uh, under the legislation, the maximum time for which an application can be made for six months is for six months. After that point, it has to go to the Secretary of State or rather some junior person in that department. But it's, uh, I think it's very likely that this closure will be extended. I don't see that the housing will be completed in that time frame and some of the footpath runs very close to some of the properties that I'm yeah. going to through the front doors mm -hmm. probably. Is that being, being diverse? It's a there is a there is a I'm not quite sure I understand the diversion. So the diversion mm -hmm. is the it is to the path that runs along the bottom of the no I think it's the path that runs up to the path that runs up to lower way and then lower, along and then walk along lower way. So the, the path that runs directly from the junction with Painstown Road yeah, that diagonal path has been closed, and um, I think well, I think there might be a typo here. But then okay. the the alternative the alternative route is to walk along lower way and then down the the track to the fishing lakes, which is also a footpath. So there we go. So yeah, so that's the one that's closed. And the, the whole of that, is the whole of that is closed. Yes, the whole of that along the bottom and up to the yeah. junction with Prince Road. Yeah. Okay. That's the diversion that, route. That's fairly extensive and significant. But fairly inevitable. Yeah. But it's uh, um, okay. So as I say, expect I, I expect it to be extended. Yeah. In time. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So, uh, any other highways, traffic, road safety matters? Um, I have one more. I'm sorry, I don't know there. It's um, came through the other day. It's Hearts Hill Road. Um, in the parish of Bucklebury and Thatcham will be closed from the 27th to the 28th of April um, from the hours of 9.30 to 3.30. The closure is from the junction from Floral Way to Broad Lane. The closure is to enable Volker Highways to carry out resurface dressing as part of the Highways Improvement Programme on behalf of West Berkshire Council. Uh, resident access will be maintained throughout. Uh, if they live inside the closure, there may be a slight delay. Um, Oh, what's the date? That's the 27th and 28th. Oh, this so month. this month, that's Thursday, Friday, mm -hmm. I believe. So that's beyond our uh, floor way, is it? What was where was it between? It said from floor way to Broad Lane. That's like a buffer break. I think the buffer break. Right, yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. After the mm -hmm. oh, no. I have two other uh, highways matters. The first one is the footpath. Uh, between uh, Bath Road at the junction with North Northfield Road and Painstown Road, which I noticed uh, uh, was closed at the bank holiday weekend for work on the gas main. So I checked, and uh, it, because that is a public footpath, it is a highway, and the highway had been completely closed. So I contacted West Berkshire Council on the Monday, uh, on the weekend, and on Monday morning they contacted the gas the, the gas people, and it was repaired the same day. They they was restored the same day because they had unlawfully closed the highway. Oh, right. uh, but I think it will have to be closed to complete the work, um, and they will have to apply for uh, a traffic regulation order to do so. Uh, the other one is another. Uh, last Sunday, uh, a local resident knocked on my door to complain about the number of cars parking on Hennick Lane and surrounding roads to do with a, an event on the field. 
uh, which I would I, I would normally report that to um, uh, RNA, but because there is no meeting of RNA before at the end of our period, I'm mentioning it here. But I will take this up with the the JMC. It was a, a scheduling problem to do with um, rescheduled uh, matches for, due, due to due to wet weather earlier in the season clashing with a big event. Mm. But um, it was about among the worst I've seen it. Um, mm. And had they not been able to park on the upper field, it would have been really bad, probably gridlock. Okay. So moving on, decision notices. Mm -hmm. So um, just a few this time. Um, this has been approved. There's two refusals, one being construction of a dorm to the side of the garage roof on 24 Gordon Road. Um, that one didn't come before us, I don't know why. I can't remember. What's this first ground floor only to the garage? Yeah. That one. Um, so that's that one. And then we have this one again, proposed conversion to loft space with rear door. And again, that was refused. Um, and that was refused actually on legal ground rather than planning yeah. ones. Harm to the neighbours' privacy or outlook. But number two, which was the dorm door, it's, it's the number mm. one. It's not yeah, lawful. there we go. What, what's not lawful? This is the because, yeah, because yeah, it's the legal ground. Because there's a um, covenant on the property that it shouldn't be extended from when it was built. Well, it's not a plan, it's not a covenant. It's a covenant, it's a covenant. It may not be a covenant, it may be a, a condition. Uh, on of the original approval anyway it's something which is the original planning consent. yeah so i think the planning consent is converted into a covenant and then uh it's a breach of the planning and therefore the covenant as well yeah. okay so they applied only for the planning permission and not for, for the um waiver of the covenant i think is the, is the legal issue mm -hmm. okay so that brings us to reports from town council appointees to other bodies. Uh, so Councillor Lillycrop. Uh, so yeah, we're quite advanced with the north and east that um uh what works. Um those are you've know, seen in the press that the the significant funding is now in place for those. And the mm -hmm. work is, is well underway. The one remaining item now is to find a date for the public consultation for the, the final piece of the memorial field work. Um, and we're expecting West Park to come up with a, 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 mm -hmm. a plan for extending the, the consultation in the near future. Mm -hmm. I have to say that they having driven past both, they did have to feel being over engineered somewhat. They, yes, I had that, that feeling as well. But, yeah, that's anyway. And you still be protecting the houses. Yes. Yeah. I don't think the fences will protect the house as much, but the lots of fences turning up yeah. back to the lorries. Okay, so uh because then uh, uh, thank you. So that I think brings us to the end of the meeting. So uh with that, I will put pull the meeting to a close. And before actually before doing that, I should thank uh as this is the final meeting of planning and highways in the current period. Uh, thank you for your uh, participation and comments, and particularly thank Councillor Woodhams and Lister, who um, will, um, are not standing for re-election, and therefore we, we know for certain will not be uh, members of this committee uh, after the uh, 4th of May. Thank you, Chair. Actually, I think it's after the, well, it will be after the 4th of May if they're not re-elected, yes. Thank you very much, and with that, the meeting is closed. It's been a pleasure. Yeah.